Lacrosse fans, if you are tuned in here to Sports Canada TV at the U19 World Field Lacrosse Championships, we are streaming once again. Please tweet at me at PXP for Sports and let me know that you do have me loud and clear. I do not have a return feed in my ear, so I'm essentially talking to dead air is what it sounds like for me. But to kind of recap what has happened here, there was a small fire in one of the lighting stanchions on the main stadium field. That has been taken care of, but we have lost power to the lights on the main field, so we decided to move to field two. There is also a lighting stanchion out on field two. So the fans, our broadcast team, have now moved to field three. Teams are back warming up, and we should resume shortly. Please let me know if you got me loud and clear. We are on loud... We are on now on field three. I'm just scanning the Twitter feed here. And just see if you got me loud and clear, the stream should be resumed. Okay, they're asking to turn my volume up a bit. Okay, so apparently a little bit quiet. We're gonna crank the volume up for you. And just let me know, keep tweeting at me folks. Let me know if things are sounding better. Teams are on field three here, warming up. Fans have surrounded the field. Very kind of weird, eerie scene around the park right now as there was a pretty loud, thunderous crack in the skies as well and that just lets me know that the creator upstairs is watching this one and wants it to get going again let's recap you it's eight six canada with about five minutes to go in quarter number three we eventually move to field two we have now switched over to field three and are just about set up and set to go to resume game action and we should have you loud and clear now sorry for the delay and I think we got our audio levels fixed up better now, 100%. Thanks for all the tweets coming in. Appreciate them all. As Canada, Iroquois will get going again in about, I would say, five to six minutes. Oh, my goodness. You got to be kidding me. You got to be kidding me. The lights have just gone out on field three. You got to be kidding me. Lights just went completely dark on field number three. Field two is still lit up. Partially. This is just craziness, folks. I don't even know what to say at this point. I believe we are still streaming. I don't know if we can get a shot of the darkness or, okay. So lights on field three literally just went out and now I think the officials are gonna confer on how to proceed on this one as I don't think anybody has been through an experience like this before. Field two still lit up for the time being. A couple of light stanchions are out, but I think enough lighting to get it done, but that's the reason they moved to field three in the first place because there was better lighting on field three than on two but we may end up moving back to two, depending on what both teams and the officials decide they want to do here. Just a crazy scene at Town Center Stadium right now. Well, teams continuing to warm up here. And the fans are not going anywhere. They want to see the finish of this one, as do I, as I'm sure you do as well. But now it's a question of whether they can get the lights come back on on field three or whether we're going to shift back to field two or whether they may cancel this game and play it tomorrow during the day with no lighting necessary. 
Or they could just line up in a circle and just drop the buckets and mitts and get after it and settle it that way. Who knows? But uh, obviously, this is a first for yours, truly. I've never been a part of kind of a crazy scene like this before. And such a hotly contested game that was so fun to announce and so fun to watch. And it's just come to a dead halt here. And just before we got started once again here on field three, the lights go dim. Not seeming to bother the Nationals one bit as they're having some fun. And Canada still going through some plyometrics up and down the field here. And there's really no game plan in place to deal with something like this. And now I don't know whether a breaker is blown or whether the lights have just turned off and they need to be reset, which usually takes about 10 to 15 minutes. And as I mentioned, behind our broadcast location on field two, the light's still shining down, but the fans stay packed on the far side of the field here on field three for the time being. And no sign of switching back quite yet, but it's a possibility. So all the officials out at center field to talk things over. And I appreciate all the tweets coming in, both positive and negative. A few yahoos out there that need to get a clue, but most of it has been great feedback, and we apologize for the delay, folks. Obviously out of our control here, but doing our best. We are set up and ready to go, and if we need to switch fields, we can do so in quite short order. But the decision has not been made as of yet whether to continue this game or whether to switch back to field two. I will take a short break. You can continue to tweet at me at PXP for Sports. I'll keep you updated via Twitter as well on any developments that we have. But for right now, teams are in a holding pattern until they decide what they want to do. We'll be back. Stay with us right here on Sports Canada TV. Back after this.
All right, folks, just to give you a quick update, the lights on field two, field three, excuse me, were scheduled to go out automatically at 930, so it is not a power outage. That was a scheduled light outage, but it does take about 10 minutes to reset the ballast on the light, so we are scheduled to get going here in about 10 minutes' time. The light should come back on here on field three, and we'll get going and finish this game off. So teams will remain warming up on the field in the semi-dark, and lights should be back on in about five to seven minutes. And then we will continue Iroquois Canada late third quarter action in about five to seven minutes' time. Thanks for your patience. Thanks for hanging in there. And we'll be back as soon as we have any further developments. Thank you.
All right, folks, lights back on. Teams almost finished their warm-ups, just about set to go. Get your recalled, about five minutes to go in the third quarter. Canada up 8-6. to six. Lights are back on. Teams are warming up. We're just about set to go to finish this one off between Canada and Iroquois at the U19 Championships on Sports Canada TV. Take a short break, and we'll come back as soon as play resumes. Appreciate your patience once again, folks. Keep those tweets coming at PXP for sports. All right, folks, teams are in their huddles. Warm-ups have been complete. Just a quick check on both nets here on field three as we've been shift over to field three from the main stadium to finish this one off. We've got 5.17 to go third quarter. Fans are packed around the complete field here on field three. Now as everybody has hung in there, we hope you have as well. I know it's late on the East Coast. And lots of viewers and fans across Canada and of course, the First Nations as well, and around the world for that matter, as we're just about set to go. I'm going to have somebody from the scorekeeper's box relay the amount of time left in the quarter with hand signals. Keep note, 8-6 is your score. We probably won't have the graphics for you. I don't know if we will or we won't. No, we won't. So it's a bit of a makeshift jury rig set up here, and we'll do our best to keep you as informed as we possibly can as we're pretty much set up right behind the Canada bench on the same side as the players as they break the huddle and to be honest with you I cannot recall what the scenario was when the lights went out who had possession they may just reface this one or I think it actually may be Iroquois ball the way that the Canadians are lining up here as they continue to work on the Canadian net just to make sure there are no gaps in the netting in between the pipes behind a bear 
I have tucked my Canadian roster away as I think I'm dialed in enough there. I have the Iroquois roster in front of me just in case, but I think I'm pretty good on that as well. But uh, standing in a kind of a bird's nest perch here, just left side of center field on field three now in a, just a wacky situation here at the U19 games. I don't know how else to explain it. It will be Iroquois ball to start things back in. Just over five minutes to go in this third quarter. Canada up eight to six. And a little jostling between Jeffrey and Stotts, the two number 43s. And we're back underway. Let's place some lacrosse. As T. Nanako to sundown. As Stotts opens himself up for the ball. Nanako from behind the cage. Back to Stotts. Now Iroquois with this first position as we resume. Both teams got a lengthy warm up. And now on the drive at sundown. Looks in behind the goal once again. Pass out in front, and there's a goal. It's Nanakoke on the cut. And Iroquois, just like that, on their first possession out of the timeout. Get back within one on the goal from Nanakoke to make it 8-7 Canada. Set play right off the bat. Works to perfection. So we'll take it back to center field once again. And Dougie Jamison with a clean win and Iroquois will get the ball again. Bomberry back to Armstrong. He'll look to the far side of the field here. It's just four minutes to go now in the quarter and a much different feel over here on field three as the fans all spread out along the far sideline as I'm sure our camera is picking that up. Skyler Thomas. As he wants to run the two-man game here with Stotts, that's Bennett who slipped down, gets back up. And now ball out high here for Sunday. Sundown. This is Sunday. Now Nanakoke in the right hand. Looks inside, nobody open. Henrik with light taps on him. Skyler Thomas on the one-on-one -on -one dodge. Left alley, spins back strong side. Good defense there from Donville. Here's the drive, goal line extended. The kick out. Chance coming, Sunday loads, fires, and that one goes just wide. As Nana Coke there for the backup. Iroquois will retain possession. Three minutes to go in quarter three. T. Nana Coke wants to come near side. Around the pipe, here comes the double who's open. Feet into the stack. It gets by everybody and rolls out near center. Sky Sunday will pick that one up, and Iroquois will get reset. 8 7 Canada. Thomas will drag him low. Donville waits for him. Around the cage. Looking to feed. There's Stotts, and he can't handle that pass, and it'll roll out of bounds. Canada holds on D. And they'll get possession back here with a one-goal lead. Well, everybody looks to have settled down after some real just wackiness is all you can say. Uh, Smoke fire, a burning ballast in one of the light towers on the main stadium. All the fans, about 2,500 of them, shifted over to field two, only to be moved over to field three. Then the lights go dark on field three, a scheduled light outage. And then had to wait for it to be reset. Teams got their warm up and back underway. Iroquois have a goal out of the timeout and are within one in what has just been a fantastic lacrosse game the whole way through. As time ticking down here in quarter three. Tom Semple. Jeff T. One minute to go in this third quarter. 
Both teams informed of that as LeClaire finds Riley Curtis. Everybody spread wide here for Canada. Here's Tanner Cook on the pop out. He's got a short stick, but will move the ball. And as Canada looking for the positive matchup to drive on here. LeClaire. Cook wants it. He'll take it way out high. And now the stall on here for Canada. They got to get it in the box. Here comes Cook. Looking to feed now. Goes deep with it. Clock on the field here for Canada. Ball in behind the goal with T. Feed in behind. Cutting off the stack as Cook shoots and Armstrong makes the stop. They got the look they wanted, but Armstrong was equal. Now a long bomb here towards a bear. Now the Coke! Oh my, what a goal from Nana Koch to tie it at the buzzer in the third quarter. Mark that one down, ESPN. That should go on the highlight reel right there. And took a late shot after as well as he's looking for the call, but man. What a goal from Nana Koch. And we have all to play for in the third quarter. 8-8 eight, eight your score. Just an amazing goal from none other than Tohoka Nanako. Well, lacrosse film room, I hope you got that one cropped up and ready to go. That is one of the nicest lacrosse goals I've ever seen in field game. A long bomb from Armstrong into the pocket of Nanako, who spins and fires it home to tie the game at the buzzer. Just incredible. So with 20 minutes to play now, we have nothing decided. 8-8 eight, eight your score and a massive showdown here between Canada and the Iroquois Nationals. There was some thunder in the area too during the stoppage. As Matt Brown will calm down his troops. As we'll take you back to center field here. For the start of the fourth quarter, let's play some lacrosse. We're underway as Anaccio and Jamison duel at the faceoff X. Ball pops free. Who wants it? Anaccio's got it. Head of steam. Here he comes. Lanchbury feet across. Open man. Shot and Armstrong stared him down. Teat looking for his fifth of the game. And Armstrong stoned him. So the Iroquois. With two straight goals, have tied it up and now a chance to take the lead. Ball out high. Sherman Williams. To Mohawk. Wagner right on him. And now Austin Stotts. Here's Stotts. Feet inside, and Bear just got a piece of that now on the drive. Still with it, and he scores. It's Natacoke again. Are you kidding me? He will not be denied. Another one for number one. And Iroquois into the lead, one to nothing. Or, sorry, nine to eight. It's been a long day, folks. What a Every time you think Natacoke's outdone himself, he manages to up the ante.
Face-off win for Inaccio. And Jamison trapped out on the field as Inaccio goes for the change. Canada will settle things down here with Lanchbury and Semple. As the Iroquois have now gone in front by one. Nine, eight. As we'll continue to get you time updates as we can. I rely on Rick Lum to give me the time. Here comes Curtis, and he ties the game. Riley Curtis, straight out of Brampton, has tied it at nine. And folks, because of our field location change, our equipment had to be all moved. We will not have replays for you unfortunately for the remainder of the game we're doing our best and giving you everything we possibly can to keep this stream going so we apologize for no replays or graphics on the screen just not able to do it from our broadcast location here on field three quick up here by iroquois as they look to regain the lead bomberry and the pass behind his intended target that was Baker as that one will go out of bounds and back to Canada. Double coming on the sideline and a good move to get around. And here comes the late flag. Henrik, now you got to keep it inside the box here for the Canadians. A run low, a hard check, and we might get two fouls on this. It will be a one-minute personal on the slash. And Canada will have men up in a 9-9 game. Curtis on, French on, Leclerc, Marshall King, Curtis, Teat, Lanchbury. So I actually do not, yes, I do see Teat out there right now. As they'll set up in a, looks like a 2-3-1 here for Taylor A and Matt Brown. It's Curtis from X. This is T. Marshall King, high feet. King across the top with it. Sends it wide, down to the crease, looking for a cutter through. King wasn't open. T will pop back out. He'll run the point now. Here's Leclerc from the shooter. T with room to step in. Leclerc doesn't want to pull the trigger. T will, and it's high. As Canada there in time for backup. Was Nanakok on the slash. Here's Leclerc on the swing to King down to the crease. Room to wind and fire and score. Lynchberry berries. And it's 10 9 Canada. Man, oh man, this game has just gone back and forth, back and forth. Multiple ties, multiple lead changes, momentum swinging back and forth. And the best 19 year olds on the planet getting after it here at Town Center on field three now. Undeterred by the field change. And Peterson. After Stacy as they continue to talk before the next drop. Anaccio a clean win, he's off to the races. Open man Lanchbury doesn't shoot, now he will, and he fired it off the leg of Armstrong. Anaccio starting to own the faceoff dot. Rick! Rick! Thirteen, thirteen minutes to go here in quarter four. So sorry if I'm yelling. I'm just trying to yell down to the scorekeeper's box to keep you informed of the time as best I can. Canada in possession. This is Lanchberry. 
Now Dalton follows. The black shaft, black head, black mesh. Shears follows across the top. Fake the shot, still follows. Over the top with it, scores! And it goes for Dalton, follows. Eleven nine now, Canada, I believe, as they do not have a scoreboard in front of me. And the way these two teams are trading goals, to be honest with you, it's hard to keep track. But I believe it's eleven nine, Canada now. Fired up on the Canadian bench after that last one from Dalton follows, and Anaccio with it. And what are they going to call an early move? I think a reface is the a call from the official. Unassisted goal for Follows. 12 minutes to go. It is 11 9 Canada. And another face off win for Anaccio. 12 minutes to go. And they want him to slow it down with the yellow call here for Lanchbury. Runs into a double, got knocked down. And Canada will call timeout here before they lose possession. Catch your breath, ladies and gentlemen. We're in for a big finish here from field three at Town Centre. Canada up 11-9 on the Iroquois with about 11 minutes to play. We'll take a short break and come back with a big finish here right after this. All right, folks, welcome back to Field 3 here at Town Center. Jake Elliott with you. Feel free to send me a tweet down the stretch here at PXP for Sports. 11.42 to go in this one, and Canada up by two with possession, leading 11-9. to nine. And we'll just try to continue to keep you updated on the time remaining as we move along as I'm relying on my good buddy Rick Lum down at the scorer's table to keep relaying me the time left in this one. Back underway. Let's play some lacrosse, shall we? Open set once again. Lanchbury in the stack. Hidden ball trick here was simple. Trey LeClaire had that one poked away off an Iroquois stick. Stout's trying to catch it, but can't do it. It'll be Canada ball. In the defensive side, however, so Iroquois will put the ride on here while they can. And we got a referee's timeout as they don't have a ball handy on the Iroquois sideline. So they will stop time here. As Tehoka Nanakoke has put on a display here for the Iroquois tonight. Teat has had a strong game for Canada. And just a fantastic display of lacrosse by both of these nations. A bear on the clear. He's got Tanner Cook on the near sideline. He'll come near side with it. Jeffrey in no particular hurry. He got Wagner right at center stripe. And A bear switches spots here with Trey LeClaire. Here's Jeffrey. He's got room up the sideline now. And Canada will not rush this. Cook open if he wants it, but 
Hebert didn't see him. Now he's trapped on the wrong side of center. Cook wide open here. Got to get him the ball, and they finally do. Well done from Canada on the clear. That's about as patient as you can be. And they just waited and waited until he came open. And clear the ball successfully. And Matt Brown wants an explanation on the time left here. Ten minutes exactly to go. Thank you, Rick Lum. Halfway through the fourth quarter, two-goal Canadian lead, 11-9. As Riley Curtis will go for a run. And now Tenor Cook wants to go at his man here, Ron John. Stall call on here for Canada. they got to keep it inside the restraining line. It's the blue lines here on field three. They want it to simple, not open. Inside comes T, a low shot in Armstrong. The stick save down low. Iroquois hold, and a chance to get back within one here is Ron John on the run. Anna Koch will clear through. Ron John still coming towards the cage. Feet across, here's Bennett, and he didn't handle it cleanly. And then fished it out of the crease. Can he keep it in bounds? Little push on the back there. A bear comes over to help out. Ball just stays in play. And now they'll give it to the red and white here. Off the turnover. Full court Port Moody bounce pass right there to Henrik. No pressure around him, so he just takes that one right in the shins and then skips it up. Well, if nothing else, these two teams will have a story to tell and a night to remember, one way or the other. And we're just pleased that we're able to get this game in and continue the broadcast for you. And trust me, Yeoman's work done by everybody involved to let this game continue. Here's Semple. Jeff T. Tanner Cook. And it's hard to believe Cook, the way he's played, was not on this roster originally and was a late addition due to the injury to Stovall. Wagner. On comes Dalton Follows, who goes down to a knee to pick this one up. Stall call back on the Maple Leafs now. Follows. In deep, he's got Owen Hill guarded up on him as he wants to drive from below the goal line. Teat needs to clear out and now he will. As they look for cutters off the top of the stack, here comes Follows, beat his man. On the kick out, flag down, Lanchbury on the return feed. Here's Follows, tuck and go, and doesn't shoot it. Inside, scores! It's Tommy Simple straight out of Coquitlam and he makes it 12-9. Huge goal there for Canada, and a flag down on the Iroquois to go with it. Great patience there from Dalton Follows. Had an opportunity to shoot, went behind the cage instead. Lanchbury finds Semple coming through. And he sticks it in the back of the cage. We got a timeout down on the field with seven minutes to go. It's a referee's timeout. Bomberry. It's a one minute penalty to Tyson Bomberry. And Canada will be man up as we'll take it back to center for a huge draw. And if Canada can get possession and one on the man up, a four goal spread may be just a little bit too much to overcome here with seven minutes to play. We'll find out. Open wing to the near side here for Iroquois. And Achio. Jamison, Jamison on top of it. Bodies hit the deck. Boisino with a good clamp, comes up with the ball and he's gonna head upfield. He's got numbers here if he wants it. Right down the middle, winding, firing! And back up there just in time. Jeff Teat off the shot from Lanchbury that just grazed past the far pipe. Man up here for Canada. Riley Curtis, the late man to come on. This is Trey LeClaire. Now Jeff Teat. Semple will pop to the point. 
Give it back to T. Back to Semple. Got to move quickly. Here's LeClaire inside. Right there, King denied by Armstrong. Big time stop there from Armstrong, and then he almost threw it away. Canada comes up with the ball. He's got Lanchbury open. And they'll settle things down. Now Lanchbury stepping in, loads, and Armstrong got a piece. Ball ricochets out towards the sideline, and they'll give it to Canada once again. Wow. And we are back to even here. As Iroquois, Bomberry out of the box, back to even strength now. As Marshall King will get in a change, it'll be Wagner that comes on. As I'm just about due for a time check. And it's a three goal Canada lead, 12 to nine. Here's Semple, he's got the latest Canada goal. Wagner wants to drive, tucks it away, but not quick enough and it was stripped. Nationals need goals and they're gonna push the tempo. Gets around LeClaire, Wagner trying to trail him down from behind. Pass for Nanakook was off the mark and now a flag comes in against Canada. Five minutes to play. And this will be a man up here for the Iroquois now. And starting to approach must score territory now for the Nationals. Down three here with five to play. Can a bearer and the defense come up with a stop? Nanako. Sundown. Stepping in is Thomas. You know who they want to get it to. Either Stotts or Nanakoke here. And here's Nanakoke on the drive. Abear with the stuff down low. And Wagner. I'll put the loose ball. Huge stop there for Abear. And now Canada will run as they got some open space. Long pass up field. High check throw. And that'll be a flag down on Iroquois now. Jerry Stotts, the guilty party. Or was it Bomberry again, excuse me? And now they want Lanchbury to run here. As they're looking for another flag, got to keep it in the box here for Peterson. And they're going to say in behind the goal for a second time. Mental lapse there from Canada. On the flag down, you can only put the ball behind the goal once. Canada did it twice, and that's why play is blown down. And now changes here for both teams. As the penalty to Iroquois. And a chance for Canada to salt this one away with a man up goal. They'll be patient with it. Peterson will come on late here for Canada. So it's now a six on five. They got to get a man behind the goal here for backup. Rick. Three to play. Peterson, T, Curtis. Under three to go. Stall on here for Canada. Up three in a huge pivotal game here in the round robin. Iroquois will take on USA tomorrow night. Canada gets Australia. Canada trying to go to two and one. This would put Iroquois at one on one if they go down to defeat tonight. And that sets up a monster game with the USA tomorrow night. As USA has already beat Canada on the opening night of the tournament. Australia with a win over England today. They are one and one. Two to play. And Peterson just running back and forth here. Now finds an open man. And Jeff Teat. Armstrong out of the goal here to pressure. And Teat will roll back in Canada just chewing up precious seconds here on the Iroquois. Got to go double the ball here if you're the Nationals. And I'm not sure what they're waiting for. 
I know you don't want to get scored on, but you got to get after the ball here if you're the Iroquois. And Teat just running circles around, and now he gets it to Curtis. Goalie Armstrong out on Curtis now. And Teat will get it back. Curtis will set a screen for him. Oh, man. Weak call there on Curtis on the moving screen as he got pushed. And the Iroquois will get the ball back. They'll get across center. 60 seconds to play here in a classic between the Nationals and Canada. And now we got a timeout down on the field. Iroquois will call timeout. Freeman Bucktooth, <coughs> excuse me, calls timeout. Iroquois down three with just under a minute to play. Just a wild night here in Coquitlam. So we'll see if Canada wants to pack it in or whether they will pressure here. You would expect it's going to be Stotts or Nanako to take the ball to the cage. But they need three in quick fashion here. Not a lot of time left. But what a lacrosse game we've seen here tonight. Some just spectacular goals from both teams. And then action will resume here tomorrow, and I'm not sure what the status will be. I'm not sure if crews will work through the night to get the lighting repaired on stadium or whether we'll have to make alternate arrangements to schedule some games on other fields. But you know what to do. Follow me at PXP for Sports, and we'll keep you apprised of everything that will happen here, webcast-wise, game-wise, schedule-wise, all of it. I'll try and keep you updated the best I can. As we appreciate you hanging in here for a late night on Sports Canada TV. Your staff has left you, Joel. Your, the Lone Ranger left. Yours truly, Jake Elliott, with you as well. And this one just about in the books. We're back underway. Here's Nanako. Trying to make it happen for the Nationals. They'll play the two-man game. And now Skylar Thomas. One-handed shot from Stotts. A stop from A. Bear, and that should just about do it. Canada will try and clear. Hard hit thrown and double flags come in. And what's the call going to be here? Somebody's actually lost a shoe down there for the Nationals. And I think this penalty is going to go against Iroquois. So Canada can essentially just hang on to the ball for the remainder of the game here with a man up. And it looks like they will win and hang on here. And move to two and one. Still time. But should get the free clear at center here as well. Twenty nine seconds is the call from the official. Absolute bedlam here tonight at town center and all the fans have stuck with it and have been treated to a, just a sensational lacrosse game between the Nationals and Canada. And depending on the outcome tomorrow between USA and Iroquois, these two teams could meet again very easily in the semifinals. <laughs> Peterson. Time just about done here. Canada will hang on. And they'll beat Iroquois by a final score of 12 to 9. Well, if the creator was watching, he got entertained here tonight, as did you on Sports Canada TV, brought to you by Novus. Canada prevails over the Nationals here tonight. But this just the first chapter of a story not yet finished. But an instant classic from the 2016 U19 World Field Across Championships. And all sorts of storylines. Good luck to everybody trying to get their post done after this one. 
too many things to go back over, but just a crazy night here. But it ends with the red and white and a three-goal victory over the Iroquois Nationals, 12-9, to your final. As this one is over. Well, thanks for hanging out late night with us, folks. I'm glad we got a chance to get this one finished and bring the action to you here on Sports Canada TV. I'm not sure there's another group of people that could have made it happen the way these guys got it done. Just a fantastic job by everybody around. Thanks to everybody for their patience and their patronage. We'll be back tomorrow, day five here at the 2016 E19 World Field Lacrosse Championships comes up beginning tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. That'll wrap it up for here for us tonight, for Andy Watson, for Choil, our cameraman, our production crew, everybody, Jillian, Adam, and the gang who have now gone home. I am Jake Elliott. For the fastest game on two feet and for the creator, we'll see you tomorrow from the U19 World Field Lacrosse Championships. Good night, everybody.